hello everyone welcome back to my channel i know that it's been a while since i last posted a video i'm really sorry i was just so busy this past few days in school but now i will be making a new video about behavior management i know that in every classroom there is one or two students that need special attention and as a teacher i have been teaching for 10 years and I know I am not yet an expert on this part, but I'm going to share to you guys what are the different strategies that have been working well with my class. So without further delay, let's talk about it. Please keep on watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's start with the most effective strategy. It is building relationship. I know this may sound a cliche, but building relationship is a must to every educator in every classroom. I know that it is so easy to build relationships with those who are good and who knows how to follow directions. But for those who have challenging behaviors, to be honest, I am having hard time. But... I've experienced it and I've learned it that the only way that these children who have challenging behavior to follow whatever you want them to do in the classroom is to build a relationship with them. So the question is, how do we build relationship with our students? So I have some strategies in order for me to build a relationship with my students. First is to get to know their background. It is important that as a teacher, you do your research. Every child has its own story. Every student in your classroom has different cultural and family background. So you need to know this information for you to build a lasting relationship with your students. Second, you also need to make sure that these kids will feel your genuine concern because it's so easy to say i love you but i love you that you mean it is the most important so how do you show that so show to the kids that you care for them that you care not just for this year but for their future so it is very important that the kids will know your genuine love and care for them to trust you I always make sure that my kids will feel that I am someone that can protect them in the classroom. That's why I always emphasize that I want them to be safe, to feel safe in my classroom. Even though you love the kid, you also make them understand that just like their parents, their parents love them so much. But there are times that they need to be disciplined, that they need to be corrected when they do wrong. So that's what I do with them. I always tell them that I love you, but if you do wrong, you need to face the consequences. Usually, I just take away privileges. Instead of going to the computer, they need to do worksheets. So in that way, you are just taking away something that they love, but at the same time, they're still learning because they're doing math worksheets or reading worksheets. So it's not that heartbreaking for them. And at the same time, even though they are in a disciplinary action, they're still learning. And once you have built that relationship, it's so easy to talk to the kid. It's so easy to redirect the kid if she or he is not doing good choices in the classroom because she knows that you care for him or her. That she knows or he knows that you are there to help him or her be successful in class. Building relationship is not a one day or one week or even a month job. It is a day-to-day -day thing that you need to do. So every day you pray for your kids, you pray for yourself that you can be a person that love them without condition. And you are there as a teacher who wants to give them the best education and help them to bring out the best in them. So I do it every day. It's not a one-time task. 
I do it every day. I try my best to build relationship every single day. And if there are times that you failed as a teacher, there will still be tomorrow. And I never, I never hinder myself from apologizing whenever I do some mistakes. For example, when I raise my voice, I make sure that I apologize and explain why I did that, why I needed to raise my voice. Because there are times that kids sometimes test our limits. So you just need to be open to them and communicate to them the reason why you need to do something, you need to act like that. So open communication is also very important. So that was the first step, building relationships. So my second step is the use of zones of regulations. <laughs> So in the morning, when my students get in in my classroom, I have the zones near the door. So when my students get inside my classroom, I have the zones placed near the door. So they are going to check in on how are they feeling on that day. So they need to get their number and they need to place their clips, whether they're in red, green, yellow, or blue. By doing this, I, as a teacher, will know if my students are ready to learn. So I will take note of those who are in red and those who are in yellow and those who are in blue. So those who are in green are good because that is our goal that all students are feeling green that day because green is feeling ready and ready to learn. After they check in, they are going to go back to their seats and do their morning routine. Now. Those who are in the red zone, okay, I am using another strategy in my classroom where they can go so that they could, you know, regulate their own behavior. And hopefully the goal is from red, they're going to be in green. So what is this place? I have a place called safe place where I have my feeling bodies in there. So this is my third strategy, the feeling bodies. So as I mentioned, I have a place called safe place in my classroom. So those who are feeling sad, feeling angry, or they are not ready to learn yet, they can visit the safe place anytime they need it. In the safe place, I have placed different tools that they can use to regulate their behavior. So I have there the feeling journals where they can draw or write about what they're feeling on that day. They, I also have um, a mind game that they could use to, you know, to feel better whenever they're too excited or too sad. So they could use that mind game for them to feel good and feel better. I also have some art materials that they could use to draw and to color. I also have some books that they could use to read while they don't feel good so i have the books there i also have a feeling buddies so the feeling buddies that i have in my safe place are very effective so the feeling buddies are eight different toys it's like a stuffed toy that has their own that has different emotions so there's happy, there's sad, there's angry, there's frustrated, and all other emotions. And I teach my students on how to use this. So when they feel angry, they're going to do get the angry friend. We call it the angry friend. And they're going to tell the angry friend whatever they feel on that day. And why are they feeling that? I told them that the angry friend can get their angry feeling. And this is just feeling that they can let go. 
If they're sad, they can get the sad friend. And this sad friend will listen to them and will get the sadness that they feel. So I also teach that one to my students. So it's very nice. My students are not asked to go there. If they don't feel to go to the safe place, it's okay. But most kids know that they need it. They will really go there any time of the day. And But I told them they can only go for a maximum of five minutes. Of course, I don't want them to be staying there for the whole day. So, And they've been doing it right. So they're just been staying five minutes. I have the timer. So when they get in, they need to set the timer. And then if it's five minutes, they need to get out. And they can go back again if they still need it. But they just need to do it five minutes because other kids might be also might need the same thing also. They might need the safe place also. So that's why I have limit of five minutes. So this safe place is very important in my classroom. And I think for me, all classrooms should have a safe place because sometimes kids need a place where they could pour out their feelings and they could be alone because kids need to know how to recognize these feelings that they're feeling. If the kid is not ready to learn, you cannot force it. So it's really important that you have a place set up like that. It doesn't need to be grand. Mine is so simple. As long as there is a place in your classroom that they could be alone. Now let's move on to the fourth strategy, how to manage behavior in the classroom. So I have this, the I can do it stars. So I don't need to have this for all my students. I may have only one or two or three students that need specific reward system. So, so this is how I do it. So I will place this um, somewhere that the students can see it. So let's just say student A has a very challenging behavior and we already recognize, I already recognize what are these challenging behaviors. For example, um, out of focus, rooming around the classroom or talking without listening in the class. So these are examples of challenging behaviors. You need to identify these challenging behaviors of the students. Now, if you have identified that, you need to communicate that to the students. So this is the our agreement. Now, every day they already get five stars. They don't need to earn it. They just need to keep them, keep them intact. Now, every time that the student will not make good choices or will do those challenging behavior that you have already communicated to the student, you're gonna take out one star. So every day I told my student that you need to keep at least three stars for you to get a star at the end of the day. So I will give the student a big star at the end of the day that they can show to their parents. So if the parents will see that star, in their notebook that means that they have kept their goal and they have made good choices at the rest of the day so now you're gonna you're gonna before you take out a star make sure that you gave at least three warnings because you don't want the students to be just take this for granted so you give three warnings and you also help the students keep the stars you remind them like hey, if the kids are doing really bad choices, you need to talk to the student again and remind her or him about your goals for that day. So your goal is not to, you know, take away the stars. Your goal is to have the kid keep the stars uh, so that he could earn a big star at home in the afternoon. So yeah, it, this is very effective. Uh, you can also set a reward. Aside from getting the star, sometimes I will tell the kid like you can get an extra five minutes recess time if you if you can keep the three stars intact and you can start with keeping two stars then keeping three stars keeping four stars until you say you can you you know that the kid can do it like you you will increase your expectations you can let them or you can ask him to keep five stars so yeah this is very effective the last but never the least strategy that i use to manage behavior is 
this one. So it is like a rubric of their behavior that is based on our three rules in our classroom, which is to be responsible, respectful, and safe. So this is very detailed. Um, kids can get five if they're very good on that day. Depends on every aspect. So I'm going to read to you an example. For respectful, they will get five if they use kind and polite words to teachers and classmates. Follow direction the first time without delay. Follow classroom rules and school rules without reminders. Display a positive attitude to learning by actively participating in class. So they will get five if they are very good on that day in terms of being respectful. Now they get four if they have one or two minor infractions or one moderate infraction. Three if they have they have up to three minor infractions or up to two moderate infractions with a total up to three. They get two if they get up to five minor infractions and one if their behavior is so extreme. And you can bring, let them bring this home and their parents can sign below. So in this way, the parents will really know the exact behavior of their kid. So I find this very effective as well. You can customize this one depending on your needs and depending on your rules in the classroom. So I like it because it's very detailed. Um, the kids will be rate in terms of numbers like five to one, five as the highest, one as the lowest. So this is very effective. So yes, those are my five strategies that I use in my classroom. And I find these strategies very helpful and effective for me. So that's it. Those are my five effective behavior management strategies that I use in my classroom to manage challenging behavior of some of my students. I hope that you have learned something from me today. Thank you for watching guys and see you in my next video. Bye, have a nice day.